During the last few years, the performance of our computers has increased continuously, while their size has been reduced. This is due to the fact that the transistors could be manufactured in smaller sizes. However, there is a physical limit because quantum effects play a significant role for transistors which have a size of a few atoms and reduce their reliability. It is possible to determine the position and state exactly by mechanical laws for extended objects. So our present transistors have a defined state of zero or one at any time. In quantum mechanics, particles are able to assume different states at the same time. It is possible to measure the spin of so-called qubits, which can be up for zero and down for one. In addition, the qubit can also be in both states at the same time, the so-called superposition. Due to this property, quantum computers can determine all possible results of a calculation simultaneously on the one hand. A filter has to pick out the best result afterwards. On the other hand, in conventional computers, all results have to be determined one after the other. The theoretical power of quantum computers is much higher than for conventional PCs. In the example, the path through a labyrinth has to be found. While the conventional computer checks each possible way, the quantum computer finds all paths at the same time and filters out the correct one. So-called trapped ions are often used as the core of such qubits. These particles are able to retain their superposition for up to 10 minutes. In order to change the state of individual qubits, a pole trap is used. It is possible to slow down the ion in a way that it can be manipulated by very fine laser beams. The pole trap consists of a ring electrode and two electrodes at the caps. The polarity of the ring electrode is the opposite to that one of the caps. This creates a kind of saddle-shaped electric field. The whole trap is in vacuum. When an AC voltage is applied to both electrodes, the field changes its polarity. This prevents the ion from leaving the center of the trap. You can think of like a ball on top of a saddle. If the saddle doesn't move, the ball will fall down at one side. However, if the saddle changes its position, the ball will stay at the center. So it is possible to hold an ion between electrodes. However, the ion is not completely at rest. Laser cooling can be used to slow down the ion again. Temperature, by physical definition, is the speed of atoms moving in space. Fast atoms mean a high temperature and slow atoms lead to coldness. Laser cooling takes the advantage of this effect and slows down the trapped ions. An ion moves in space in any direction. A laser shoots a photon onto the ion where it gets absorbed. The wavelength of the photon is chosen exactly so that only photons whose direction of motion is the opposite to that of the ion can be absorbed. Because of the conservation of momentum, the ion is slowed down slightly during this process. After that, the photon is emitted again by so-called spontaneous emission. Lenses are used to allow laser cooling and the modification of qubits. In addition, the trapped ion has to be imaged at a CCD sensor for process control. Therefore, trapped ion lenses are often color corrected for two wavelengths, the laser wavelength and the fluorescent observation wavelength. To hit the trapped ion, a very small focus on an also small scan field is necessary. Because of the small focus, these lenses have to be diffraction limited and they need a maximum NA. Another important issue for the optical design is the vacuum chamber, where the pole trap is located. The vacuum window limits the distance between the focal plane and the lens to a minimum value. No laboratory setup for trapped ions is identical to another. The thickness and material of the vacuum window vary, but so does the distance to the focal plane and even the type of trapped ions. Thus, the necessary wavelength for observation and irradiation vary. Therefore, custom solutions are usually necessary for trapped ion lenses. In order to calculate a customized design, our engineers need a description of your laboratory setup that is as precise as possible. It is important that you tell us at least the properties of the vacuum window, the minimum distance to the focal plane, the necessary focal size or NA, the used wavelength and the magnification. 
In addition, it must be clarified whether a color correction is necessary if there are more than one wavelength. Nevertheless, Cell Optics offers a selection of already designed lenses in its catalog. They are the basis for new designs and can sometimes be reused with slight modifications. Cell Optics is specialized on customized lenses. Therefore, it is worth to inquire about a suitable lens even if your experimental setup is very different. In this case, our technical team will calculate a preliminary design for you from which one or more prototypes can be manufactured in closed consultation.